Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. And now, here are Bob and Richard. Good afternoon. Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. I'm Bob Dancer. And I'm Richard Munchkin. Our guest today is SD1, which I've been told stands for Skydiver 1. Not he, standard deviation one. <laughs> he might be standardly deviated, but that stands for Skydiver One. He is a blackjack player and just came out of um, Colin Jones Boot Camp as a advisor. And SD1, welcome to uh, Gambling with an Edge. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Richard. May I call you Sky instead of SD1? Yeah, is that's it, easier for you to say. <laughs> it is. It is. I, I feel like we're friends already. All right. So, how did you learn to be a a blackjack counter? Uh, blackjack apprenticeship, exclusively. Um, I heard about, obviously, other than like 21, the movie and things that have come out, um, you know, saw it, whatever. But my interest was peaked in church. So, I was sitting in church one day and Ben Crawford, the yes. other half who started Blackjack Apprenticeship. The shorter half. Yeah. <laughs> he um, was doing a talk as we go to the same church. It's a multi-site, so he's at a different location, but basically his interview was on a big screen and uh, he was talking about his view of money and how it's very different than your average bear because of counting cards and having hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table, exchange hands back and forth. And I was sitting there listening to it, getting the point of what he was saying in terms of how it related to church and our faith. But um, then the other message was, this sounds cool and I think I can do this. <laughs> and I went home, looked up Blackjack Apprenticeship, signed up that night. Did you mm. watch the movie? Oh, yeah. And I did watch Holy Rollers. Yeah, yeah I didn't. I looked after I looked everything up and read it. I'm like, this sounds legit. And I knew um, Ben not super well, but I knew of him. And I was like, you know, this is the kind of a guy I'd trust. So I don't think this is a sham. And uh, turns out it's not. <laughs> <laughs> now, how long ago was that? Two and a half, three years ago. Yeah. And, and so what was uh, what did you do first? You buy a book, I assume? Um, no, I got the membership and i just immediately started training with their resources okay so you didn't buy a book i didn't buy a book and later did you buy a book i or? bought books later so i got into reading different books once i was already kind of an established card counter and and i wanted to learn more and more but i literally just learned using blackjack membership tools i bought some other tools that you could use and i never used them i'm 100 percent trained by bja so when you say other tools, like, are you talking about like Casino Verite? Or? Verite, yes. Yeah, you never used that. I, I own it. Well, I bought uh, it. What did you use to analyze your, you know, the games? Oh, so CVCX, I used that oh, piece. Okay. But now yeah, yeah. Colin actually has something out that you can analyze your game as well, which is a great resource and tool. And it's less complex, which is, I think, really nice, especially for... Um, early on card counters, you know, Verite can get kind of deep. You can do a lot with it, but it can also get a little bit overwhelming. Um, and his just analyzes straight up like what you need for your blackjack card counting game. And is that an online source or is that a, an app or what is that? Yeah, it's a, it's an app and yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's an app. You can get it on the, on the web and then you can also do it on your phone. Huh, I didn't realize that. So Blackjack Apprenticeship is a sponsor. Yeah, right. This sounds like <laughs> and, a commercial. Right. So, so, and, and they're a big part of my story. <laughs> and we haven't really talked about what that much about what kind of tools are available for the membership. So what tools did you find that were most available? Well, Colin, we're doing this in lieu of a commercial today. <laughs> right. Go ahead, Scott. <laughs> um, I mean, the resources on the site are everything from, you know, uh, counting drills, basic strategy, deviation, memorizing charts, but they also have them written out in sentences, which is better for me than memorizing the visual look of a chart. Um, and then obviously the forums and asking questions, the networking is, is massive. And then where I was just the other day and, uh, was the boot camps, and I ended up going to a boot camp as well, and that was huge for me. I mean, why, why was it huge? What? Um, it shored up a lot. I literally came to the boot camp and I had like 
as I was going through my training, I had a tablet and I would write down any question I had. Like I would ask it on the forum, but I thought, okay, I'm going to have pros in front of me. So I'd write down the questions. And uh, I went through the boot camp and I had this entire pad of paper of questions. And by the end of it, like when Colin said, any more questions? I think I had one or two questions left. Wow. If at all. So just the information was incredible. The networking which jumped off a lot of the community for me and where I am as an AP now, even outside of card counting, um, was big at that point, but it just, it gave me confidence having a test out there live being put through the did ringer. Did you pass the first time? I did. I passed my first time. What percentage of people do you think passed the first time? I, I think, I feel like Colin said there's maybe one or two per boot camp on average that actually passed. And about 20 people that in passed. a boot camp? Yeah. Wow. That passes so with perfect. most do not pass. Correct. Wow. Because they've understudied before they go. The boot camp is not for beginners. It can be. There are beginners who show up there. Yeah. But it's basically to, uh, you get the most out of it if you've put in a lot of work before you go. Is mm-hmm. that fair? Yeah. I, I mean, I think I think that's fair. I think you can get a lot out of it no matter where you are. But for me, my I kind of agree with you. I think you should put in some work prior to going there. It's beneficial. Yeah, if you are not counting already, you're not going to learn it in one weekend and pass a test. Yeah, no. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I agree. But uh, So now you go back to these boot camps are several times a year, Mm -hmm. and you go back to some some of them anyway, Mm -hmm. and deal cards to these people and uh, get to know them and answer their questions. That's right. And do you get paid for that, or you just do that? Uh, I I do it because um, I think it's fun, and uh, I also just want to help out the community and Colin. All right, well, let's get back to your story. Yeah. So you went through a boot camp, yep, and you decided to go out and go count some a- cards, apply what you learned, <laughs> yeah. right? So and 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 you were up in the Seattle area. Um, no, I so oh, give me that story. Yeah, so I. Let's backtrack a little bit. So I was like, I don't know, 30 hours of play before I went to boot camp. I passed my test out. Now I'm really feeling good. I thought I was perfect, but now it's confirmed. And I go back to my area and I'm just, I'm getting destroyed. Um, And I'm I'm down almost 40%, uh, maybe just under that in my bankroll. And I had to resize my bets. And I'm just like, what, you know, what's going on here? Um, I go out to the Washington area. Oh, wait. So I thought you were already there just because Ben and the church. So he was connected via television across the United States? Yeah. He lives in my area now, which is not in Washington anymore. It's a different area in the United States. So I went out to Washington because it's a good area uh, for play. Great coffee. Great coffee, (laughs) right? And... um, I because I had been getting beat up so badly, I stopped in and saw Colin and had requested prior to. Don't think you're going to stop in and see Colin like this, um, <laughs> but I requested that he test me out again because I wanted to make sure my results before were right. So he tested me out a few times right there, like on a on a kitchen table, and then um, we went down the street to a casino, and he wanted to make sure you know maybe this in guy's doing something different yep. in a casino. And I passed there, and I said, "Okay, great, I'm good to go." And at that now, how point, how many hours were you losing? It's it was just shy of 180 hours. So the, your story is almost exactly like mine. <laughs> I, I, I we mean, just really, got really lucky in the thing, beginning. I I, te- I tested out. I had people go to the casino with me and test me out. Yeah, and I quit. <laughs> You I did. was like, "This sucks." <laughs> I quit. Yeah, it's horrible. And I, yeah, and I, I, I stopped playing. Yeah, uh, did, but you persevered. Yeah, I did. Did you ever get back at the game, Richard? Well, I, yeah. <laughs> what happened? I mean, thank God, I had a good friend who came to me. You know, like a month later, and he had joined another team, and they started winning like crazy. He's like, "You got to give this another chance." Right. You know, and I was like, "All right, I'll try again." You know, and then I went back and I started winning, and yeah, you know. The rest is history, as they say. But, right. Uh, so, yeah. So, okay. So, you did this test out. and But for you, rather than quitting, you were like, okay, I'm doing it right. I'm going to go. Yeah. I I have a strong disposition towards I'm going to make this daggone thing work if I know I believe in it. And uh, I had I just 
gotten back to almost even, like recovered my bankroll and basically starting from scratch again. What was your bankroll? I started off with $50,000 bankroll, which, you know. Much not, more than most yeah, people. Yeah, correct. Um, and I was guided very well on that. Like, okay, hey, that's a sizable bankroll. So when you're starting off, don't necessarily spread the way, you know, you can. And then after the boot camp, I, you know, started spreading the way I could and got crushed. But I had built my way back up to my 50K, go out to Washington, get tested out. Everything is great. Feeling great again. Go out that night, lose $8,000 on my first shoe I play. <laughs> I was just like, wow. <laughs> it was a great game, too. <laughs> but um, after that trip, I, I recovered some of it, and then it, it just – I think I said the analogy I used was an ascent to Everest, like positive variance just started falling on me and my chart just started climbing, climbing, climbing. So <laughs> math works. Yeah. And, and have you had another extended losing streak since then at any point? Not, not like, not that, that big. No, I have not, you know, d typical ebb and flow that you're going to see on any chart. Um, but I haven't had an extensive one, but I'm sure it's coming. It's part of the game. Right. Were you married or in a significant relationship when this losing streak happened? Yes. How did that go over at home? So um, that story is with my ex-wife. Um, and no, it didn't have anything to do with AP <laughs> life. Everybody's like, ah, oh, here uh -huh. we go. <laughs> Says he. <Yeah. laughs> no, it didn't. Um I had actually gone to her and said, hey, I I need you to do me a favor while I'm going through this. Don't ask me how I'm doing for the first 200 hours. I wanted to be like a... Good thing you said 200, not 180. You, right, right. <laughs> I know. Not 170, yeah. <laughs> um, and she had agreed to it, and uh, she you know, held up her end of the bargain. And fortunately, I was up about 15K, which, you know, EV-wise, I should, you know... Was, it was worth a lot more, but in her mind, it was like, well, okay, you're making money doing this. That's great. So it was kind of... But after nothing. 180 hours, you were down 20000 Yes. And to some wives, that's um, that's a significant amount. She didn't know that I was down because she didn't ask until 200 hours. <laughs> right. That was a really smart thing to do, uh, you know, at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to... I looked at what the... Um, what the N zero for the game was. And I was like, okay, I'm going to put some cushion on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's interesting. As the 200 hour was approaching. Yeah. Were you nervous? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was nervous. But, um, but you're, you're the one who says when the 200 hours are in, cause like if you, she doesn't really know whether you're at 120 or 290. Yeah. Yeah. That's true, but I have a really, uh, I'm not, I'm not very good at, at lying like that. I'm not a big fan of it either, so I don't think I could have pulled that off. Okay. So, are you doing this as a full time player? Uh, no, I'm not a full time player. I am a uh, part timer. Um, although sometimes, on a month to month basis, I definitely put in full time hours in a casino with uh, counting and and other AP stuff that I do, um, but. Because of my job and the opportunity I have with that, because I travel a lot for work, um, I'm able to freely get in a lot of hours. So when I when I go on a trip um, to go see clients or go make a sale, um, I am basically done for the day at a certain point, and I can go work out, eat, and sit in my hotel room and watch TV. Um, or I can look and see if there's a casino around, which generally speaking, there's a casino around. <laughs> so, so what kind of hourly EV are you <clears throat> generating? Um, probably right now, probably around anywhere from 250 to 300 an hour. Um, it can get a lot higher, obviously, on a good double deck game. But yeah, I'd say that's about the so average. So why, why are you still working a job? Yeah, good question. Um, I... Coming from the financial world, I have a particular goal in mind to have as an nest egg. So my whole goal is to retire, retire as in financially independent um, by the time I'm 45. 
and uh, you know that's only a few years away. So, and I'm right on track for that goal. So as as soon as I have that particular amount, then I will just be full time AP and also an entrepreneur because I also um, have other side gigs or hustles that I that I do. Okay, so you set a a, a number. I actually did the same thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, if I have this amount of money, yeah. I can live the rest of my life and not have to work. Right. Right. If I never worked at all again. Right. So, yeah, I think that's a kind of a good approach. Yeah. Um, and you would probably hit that number anyway without the job, but you might get there faster right. this way with the job. Right. And I, you know, I have benefits and right and right now. Well, and the job gives you the travel. You get all your travel it, yeah, paid it pays for, for right? my, a lot of my, I mean, I still do individual AP trips, um, but there's a lot of my trips, you know, my company is essentially paying for the flights, the hotel, which helps me going as an underrated player 99% of the time because I don't need your room. I don't need your food. I don't need any of that. <laughs> right, right. So you play unrated. I do, 99% of the time. I, I, I've i played rated at three properties in the United States. And um, one of them specifically was a particular play, and there was a reason I was playing rated. Um, but it actually was involving counting, and I was er- able to earn their top tier status, uh, which has been really nice, especially when I come to Vegas because I get free rooms and you know, got the cruises you don't count and all those that places stuff. Places when you stay on the free rooms. Too. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. This this uh, chain has not seen action from me since this play was done. <laughs> so yeah. Um and and uh because I hear all the time from people, you know, oh you can't play unrated, right? So obviously. How many hours do you have in now in, in two and a half years or whatever? It's just over 700 hours. 700 hours. Yeah. Okay. So you played all over the United States, 700 hours. Right. Not being rated. Okay. Right. Yeah. So for With, those out there who tell me you cannot play unrated, yeah. Yeah, that's... Although you probably haven't played Atlantic City. There it's... Like, I have not. I yeah, have not it's played hard to Atlantic play City. there unrated. That's true. Yeah, I so mean, my, my view of... There are particular areas like Atlantic City that you're... You, it is difficult. Um, well, eventually, you know, I'm not going to be able to avoid getting in databases. It's going to happen um, at some point. So you're not in there yet? No. I mean, I would have assumed they had your picture at least. I'm sure I'm, name. you know, anonymous guy, 6234 or whatever, but good luck finding me, you know, that yeah. way. That's It's just really hard to do that within yeah. the ba- databases the way they work. So, no, they do not. I'm, I'm not in the databases. Yeah. You mentioned you were in the financial industry, right? So yes. So you were in options trading? Yeah. Um, I worked for a private client group at a major U.S. bank, and then um, I also worked for a financial um, investment firm and uh, did work for the CBOE, the Chicago Board of Options Exchange, and and helped advise clients, and I traded myself. So why why did you get out of that? That's obviously a much bigger casino. It's a much bigger casino. It's not. This is going to sound crazy. All, all the other card counters out there are going to be like, "What?" Um, it's not as uh, consistent, and there's way more variance. <laughs> ah. yeah. yeah. So certainly more scalable because right. we're not going to get backed off from the biggest casino in the world. Um, but it also was getting to me a little bit, especially um, trading myself and then handling others. You know. If other markets outside of the U.S. market were open and I, I had a client at the time, you know, it could be 5 a.m. and I'm getting a call from China because they wanted to know something. So it, I was go, go, go. The burn rate in that world is very high and it gets to you. It's very compatible. I mean, there's a lot of cross back and forth mm-hmm. between those two worlds. There is. Somebody was telling me just recently that uh, Andrew Yang, who came from that world, I believe, uh, said in some interview that he was a card counter. So uh, I don't know if he listens to the show, but if he's not busy these days, I can't we'd love to have him on the show. Yeah. yeah, well, Bill Gates plays one four poker. <laughs> we could have him on too if he's yeah. not busy. Yeah, um, yeah, he could talk about his gambling. Yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah, if anybody knows Andrew Yang, you could ask him if he wants to come on the show. We, we would, uh, you know. Tell him how his numbers are unpredicted. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> he could bet that market. Okay, so now you're not in, you're not in the options world. 
No. You're a uh, salesman of sorts. Yes. So you have to go around the country selling your product. Yes. Do they send you to foreign countries as well? Yes. Oh, well, that's good too, right? So. Yes. <laughs> so when you're at the table and they ask you, why are you in town? Uh huh. Do you give them straight answers? Uh, sometimes. And so, but just the answer of I'm in sales is covers a multitude of it possibilities. Do, it does. Usually they don't want to talk to you much after right. that, right? So, um, yeah, I, I used to sometimes use that when people would say, why are you in town or what do you do? And I would say, you know, do you have life insurance? <laughs> that, you know, they really don't want to talk to you much after that. Right. Have you, know? you considered Amway? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean the sales. It, you know, I'm not a young guy, so I'm, I I don't have the issue of why does this guy have money because um, I started so late. But um, it, it still explains like, okay, the guy's in sales, he travels, he has money, whatever. Yeah. So, and do you tend to talk much at the table, or you're the quiet type? I talk a lot. Uh-huh. I, I'm the guy that you'll hear across the casino. Um, definitely, I. I'm a very A type personality guy. Um, I enjoy people and meeting people and talking to people. Um, but I definitely, I think that has also helped me in a, in a big way get the hours I have. You know, one particular casino I took over $100,000 from before they were finally like, what the heck's going on? Um, and I think a big reason for that was just. And that was unrated. That was rated. Oh. <laughs> and they didn't database? No. It. Wow. But I had prior knowledge of that that they did not contribute at the time and that seems to have held true um but uh yeah i i'm gonna talk up to pit boss every second i get yeah well if he's engaged in a conversation he can't really be watching the cards right i mean there's like one in ten thousand pit bosses that can count cards but Probably none that can count and carry on a conversation at the same time. Well, yeah, and I and I just generally speaking want to be a friendly person. I you know it can be miserable being a car counter, especially when you're losing. So I don't want that aspect of it being miserable for me. Also, you know, I want to try to engage my my brain in other ways while I'm there too, and and talk to the other players like a good gambler would, and um, you know just have conversation while i'm sitting there just doing this monotonous thing over and over and over have, have you had any bad back offs uh i have um i was so i was i used so i was playing rated but not rated as myself <laughs> <laughs> um and i can we talk about how that works or yeah. is that something you don't want to no it's just, you know somebody else's card then yeah, you know okay. somebody else is willing to say okay here's you know no big deal. You can you can play into this card, and um, this, so he gets the comps. Yeah, right. I said this can go. You know, this was actually um, facilitated by uh, another AP friend, and um, he got the card and it was like, okay. He told him this could work out one of two ways. One, it could be great and get all these comps. Two, you might never be allowed back in this casino ever again. <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> that's going right. to happen, right? Well, the latter happened pretty quickly, actually, um, because because I didn't care. I I was spreading quite big uh, at this particular place, and this place used to take action really well, and it you know things in casinos change all the time. So uh, it had kind of switched a little bit, and um, I got backed off. I told this story on on the podcast with with Colin, but he said the funniest thing to me. He looked at me and he goes, "Are you playing with a card?" And I said, "Yeah, why?" And he goes, "Okay, good. Well, you're done. No more blackjack." And he's like, "Hit the road, or no, hit the dusty trail." That's what he said. <laughs> hit the and I I mean I stopped and looked at him. I was like, "Hit the dusty trail? Did you just say that?" And he's like, "Yeah, that's what I said." Um, so I'm thinking typical back off by the time I get to the cage, I'm surrounded by nine suits and they're blocking all the other portal portholes to cash out and I'm getting harassed and, and I'm just got to get to the place with a good camera. Yeah. Um, which, you know, I'm not, I'm not easily intimidated at all. So, you know, I stood my ground and, and ended up getting out of there. Um, but the really funny thing about that was, is the line of ploppies that kept just forming because they wanted to cash out 
Well, they were blocking all, so they started getting really angry. Like, what the heck's going on here? They couldn't cash out or or take their credit card advance or whatever they wanted to do at the cage because they held the whole thing up for probably thirty minutes. Wow! So they had this massive line of gamblers and customers that wanted it, and they it, thought that was really entertaining. So what? What? What was the point? Were they just to read you the Trespass Act? Why did it take so long? No, uh, I, they, I think they quickly figured out that um, it was not my card. And I think that angered them a little bit. I mean, the they did a whole good cop, bad cop thing. And the good cop was like, well, you know, I understand that you, this is what you do. But, you know, we I, it feels like you've defrauded the casino and used some language like that. And I was like... I, you, you call it whatever you want to call it. I was like, I know I've done nothing illegal. And then I also said, also, I think your person that entered the data really screwed up because that's my card. <laughs> so I just, you know, kept the act going. I'm like, I, I'm sorry, your data entry person's not very good at what they do. <laughs> and he just. And were they demanding ID, I assume? Oh, they tried. Right. And you, and you just said I, you didn't have one? Yeah. Or I'm, yeah. I only, it was only, I think I only won like 2000 or 2500 from them. Huh. So, but so they were definitely angry about about that part. But for, I mean, most back offs are. Did they tell you you were nice. required by law to have ID when you were in the casino? Oh, I've been I've been told something like that at a cage, oh, uh, yeah. especially in the Midwest, where the cages are very sweaty, and they they do anything and everything. They'll say anything and everything they can to get you to show your ID. But. Um, no, he, he didn't say that. He was just – they were just very forceful and trying to be intimidating with – I mean, it was, nine, it was nine security guys in suits around me. So it was a big spectacle all for nothing. And eventually they just cashed you out and told you not to hit the dusty trail. Hit the, hit the dusty trail. And then I got followed by a, by a security guy on a bicycle to make sure I was off the property. <laughs> oh, I was told he was going to get a good picture of my plate, and I said, well – Somebody that rents that car the next time is going to be in a rude or for a rude awakening when they come into the your casino then because <laughs> that's a rental car. So, I mean, generally speaking, I'm really nice when these things happen, but can casinos go to Hertz and say who's driving 123XYZ Colorado plates? Will the Hertz cooperate? Do you have any idea? No, they, I don't. I mean, I, you know, I can't say if there's an nefarious activity where somebody knows somebody, there's bribery going on. I'm sure anything can happen, but as in terms of a policy for Hertz, they're not going to share customer information like that unless it's a warrant. Yeah. Yeah. And, and who would you even call? I mean, unless it's a small enough town where maybe you know somebody who works at Hertz or whatever the rental car company is. Right. But, well, they uh, didn't hate. But I mean, the other thing is, they um and this should not be legal but they call police and say hey whose plate is this for when it is your car right and the police give them that information in some instances so you know how that can be legal i don't know but it certainly happens in a lot of jurisdictions the police feel like they work for the casinos yeah um especially in tribal land they definitely work for the casinos <laughs> they'll yeah. just pull you over and yeah. then you have to give id because you're operating a motor vehicle that's a nasty trick yeah although i got pulled over but at an indian casino and they demanded id from my passenger oh and he just was like i don't have id you know you're you know yeah and nor do you can no you demand way. it <laughs> you, know. oh, you can demand it but right <laughs> But I can uh, tell you where your mother works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're talking to uh, Skydiver One, and we're taking a brief commercial break, and we're going to get back, including finding out how he got the name Skydiver One. I'm assuming it's not because he's afraid of airplanes. South Point has more than 10,000 games, returning more than 99%. This is more than anyone else has. Between December 15th and 24th, everything is half price if you use your points. This is an annual promotion from the end of the NFR Rodeo to Christmas Eve. Michael Gaughan has been very active in the NFR Rodeo for a number of years, and he has something like 3,000 stalls to do horses in. So, um, hope you like cowboy music if you go to... Uh, the South Point in early December. 
Fortunately, I do like country western music, so that was no problem. Uh, next semester, free video poker classes will begin Tuesday, January 14th. You'll hear more about that in upcoming weeks. At predictit.org, there's a market where you can place bets on the occurrence of various political events. You, let me say that again. You can place small bets on the occurrence of various political event, including whether or not someone will be impeached or how many tweets there will be or who various nominees will be or will somebody have to give a public deposition in a certain time period. Gambling with an Edge listeners receive a one-time offer of a deposit match up to $20 at predictit.org slash promo slash edge. You must play the money through once and cannot withdraw it for 30 days. Personally, I'm interested in politics and I find the site fascinating and watching how the numbers go up or down with the changing news. It's also interesting to compare their numbers to Betfair because, you know, Betfair in the, in Europe, you can, they have a betting market like this and you can bet on these things. And so it's interesting to compare their numbers, uh, you know, between the two. Are there a big enough difference? So arbitrage is well appropriate or is this as predicted as such small bets? It, well, um, the, part of the problem is, like many things, the big bridge jumpers are the best value, right? So, for example, there might be a bet, um, will Hillary Clinton be the next Democratic nominee? And at Betfair, you know, the no is 99 cents out of a dollar, whereas it predicted it might be 95 Right. So now that's a good bet. But if you have to bet 95 to win the five cents and tie up your money for a year, you know, is that really the best uh, place to, for your money? Uh, it, I mean, yeah, you have a big edge on that bet, but, you know, so it, it, but but you can look for those kinds of discrepancies and maybe you'll find better opportunities than that one that I mentioned. Yeah, if he's talking about the number of tweets in the next week. That, right, if there was a big difference, a big discrepancy, yeah, that yeah. That that would be solved. Although you you would have to have somebody in Europe to if you wanted to actually arbitrage as opposed to just you're going to have an edge on one side, so you you might just be willing to take the variance. <laughs> it's like a pair trade in the market. Right. Yeah. All right. Another one of our sponsors is blackjackapprenticeship.com. We've been talking about that. So, uh, Colin, I hope you will consider we've already done our due diligence. We very much appreciate them um, being at the being sponsors. Usually during the boot camps, they have a party for invited guests. This one I missed because Bonnie and I were square dancing out of state. But Richard tells me it was the best one ever. And there were whole bunches of very uh, successful gamblers there and uh, lots of fun games. So I'm hoping he does that at the next one and um, I'll be invited again. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was. Uh... It was. At videopoker.com, it's the best place to play lots of games. If you sign up for the gold membership, eight ninety five a month or seventy nine ninety five a year, this allows you to get correction on most of the games. An additional membership, pro membership, is sold separately at six ninety five a month or forty nine ninety five a year. Listeners can get one hundred hands for free to try it out if they sign up at videopoker.com slash g w a e. The biggest advantage of this membership is that the video poker software, it corrects you on both Quick Quads and Ultimate X. On Ultimate X, all pay schedules above 96% for both triple play and five play, it will give you the exactly correct play for every possible sum of multipliers. What we mean by sum of multipliers, if you're, if you're playing triple play 
The multipliers go from each game between 1 and 12. So the sum of multipliers can be as low as 3, meaning no multipliers at all, up to 36, which would mean in most games you were dealt a full house on the last hand. And there can be different plays, whether the multiplier is at 8, 15, 32, etc. So this gives you accurate information. So it's a great resource if you have a if Ultimate X is one of the games that you're trying to conquer. All right, so we're back playing. We're back talking with Skydiver 1. So it doesn't exactly follow the, the stream of things, but how did you choose the name Skydiver 1? Because I jump out of airplanes for fun. <laughs> uh-huh. So you jump out of perfectly good airplanes. Well, any any pilot will tell you, Bob, that there's no such thing as a perfectly good airplane. So. Oh, so that's why you jump out of that. <laughs> that's why. Now I understand. How did you get into that? Um, just did it once. Liked it a lot. Realized I couldn't afford it at the time. I was in college through just particular circumstances. Tried it again. Realized how much I liked it. I had means at that time and never stopped. Yes. That's kind of the story. Have you done 100 jumps, 1,000 jumps? Uh, any idea? A little over 2,600 skydives. Sounds, wow. like he has a, sounds like he has an idea. <laughs> well, wow. that, I have done once, uh, actually twice in the same jump. It was my first time and my last time. I did enjoy it. <laughs> That's but one more than I had. <laughs> I did enjoy it, but my... Uh, Shoot had a malfunction in it. Fortunately, we'd covered that particular type of malfunction in the training, so I knew what to do about it. And that's that's actually probably a good story from one of my stories. I was just going to say that, yeah. Have you handled that? Means I'm guessing you did a static line jump. Did you jump out of the plane and it pulled your chute, and then you had a malfunction on it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we did a static line jump, so it was automatically opened. And I'll tell it sometime in a story plan. <laughs> and after I prepare it, I might tell it on the air. All right. So you talked about an interesting back off of being told to uh, pound the dust. Is that what it was? Hit the dusty trail. Hit the dusty I'll trail. I'll never forget that. Yeah. So uh, how many times have you been backed off in Las Vegas? Zero. What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I don't have a winning game. <laughs> so how is that possible or do you just not play here a lot so it's it's just under 70 hours now in vegas okay so that's not a lot given how many casinos there are here and- it's not but at the same time it's still a little weird i think it's weird <laughs> yeah uh, yeah you clearly haven't played at I mean, the do el you, cortez do you hit no and run? Um, i have not no most of it's not. Most of it, I sit down and just play for your normal, normal I, amounts of. Uh, I, you know, the sessions ranging from one hour to four or five hours. Wow, that is amazing. It's pure luck, is what it is. I mean, I, I don't know how else to explain it, other than like maybe a crossing of pure luck to likability and huh. talking. I, 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 I have no idea. And as Bob said, clearly you haven't played the El Cortez. No, <laughs> I've not. I've walked in the El Cortez, but I've not played the El Cortez. Now the Barbary Coast was gone before you became a uh, a counter, but then it became. Well, now it's the Cromwell. Cromwell, and it was something Bills. Uh, yeah. Uh, was that it, Bills? I can't believe we can't remember this. We're old. <laughs> 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 I played Cromwell. Uh-huh. Yeah, well. Um, all right. So you said you're loud at the tables. Uh, do, is ever alcohol part of your act? Um, yes. Yeah, so I will have, I'll have a beer or two. Um, I'm not going to overdo it. I'm not going to get to the point where it it impacts my decision making. I know I listened to one of the podcasts you guys did where I can't remember who it was, but they trained Rome's. Rome's, yeah, yeah. Rome's trained. They trained inebriated, which I thought I was like, man, that's fascinating. I was like, maybe maybe I'll get into that. I'm still highly <laughs> suspect of that. I, I, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't. 
I mean, he's only been on the show sober. Next time we invite him on, there you go. <laughs> have him be shit face and see how it works. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, so, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll absolutely drink, uh, but not to excess. And, like, I have an, another one of my um, ventures in the AP world is bankrolling um, another player. And, you know, I tell him, I'm like, look, it's, it's fine to have a beer or two, but it's got to stop there. You, there's too much money and loss of EV for one bad decision, so I'm never going to push it. So you don't actually team up. You, you're you just uh, investing in his. Correct. And you play separately. Yeah. And how's that working out? Great. Yeah, he's doing great. That's good because there are a lot of stories like that that do not yeah. do not uh, end well. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, uh, others in the in the community that I, that I'm friends with have done this, and uh, there's definitely bad stories, but there's there's been some really good success stories. And my whole goal is to to help out this this guy and get him to the point where he has his own bankroll, and then he can be done with me and my money. So. But he's doing great. He's he's a determined AP card counter. So it's great. Uh-huh. Well, when he when he builds his bankroll up high enough, you can recommend him to come on the show. Absolutely. We'll, we'll get the whole story. <laughs> yeah. Have you had any really bad back offs? Have you ever been backroomed or handcuffed or hit the dusty trails as bad as it gets? <laughs> as bad as it gets. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's pretty good if that's the worst thing that ever uh happened. No, but I I mean I can share a really good story about backing off. I told the story last night about backing off a back room for the guy I'm bankrolling. Yeah. He called me um, and said, um, you know, SD1, I'm, I'm in the, I'm like in this back area and now they want me to go in this room with just a chair in it and a table. And I'm like, and he's just like, I, I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm like, well, your instincts are right. You know, why are you in the back area to begin with? And uh, I was like, you know, put your hands up, show a visual for the cameras, point to the door and say, I'm leaving. And he did it. And the security guard immediately put his hand on his chest and kept him from leaving. And um, at that point, I said, okay, well. Um, You're still on the phone with him. I'm on the this. phone. You and got a lawsuit. <laughs> I said, put me on speaker. And he's like, what? And then I proceeded to be like. I'm his attorney. You've assaulted him. You're holding him against his will. And I just pressed and pressed and pressed. And the next thing you know, he comes back on the phone. And he goes, they're letting me go. Wow. And I was like, this is okay. This is good. And then um, I said, uh, well, this worked out. By the way, don't ever go in the back room. If, if you're going to go in the back room, it better be because they physically are putting you in a back room. Otherwise, don't don't do it. And I said, and this is good because, you know, they don't know who you are. And, and he's like, well, but they got my ID. And I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought I had voided it all. But, I mean, it was, you know, that's that's a really – most people I know got in the databases very early because casinos lie and intimidate. Yeah. That's what they do. Um, I just am a very strong-willed person. And when I suspect something's amiss, um, but, I'll, you know, I'm not just like, wait a minute, what? I question it. But at the same time, I had great tutelage, and I understood very thoroughly what they were going to try to do. So I just don't – I don't bend at all when yeah. it comes to that. So did he file a lawsuit? He did not. No, they let him go. It's fine. I mean, what I mean yeah. Yeah, if all they did was put their hand on his chest. Yeah, that's, yeah. right. So that's not really – worth it is it wrong is it illegal sure it is but is it worth the time to invest and do anything like that? no it's not are there laws in that state about impersonating an attorney remember it's sd1 <laughs> <laughs> you can look me up in the phone book uh yeah so <laughs> that that does sound susp that an attorney uses a pseudonym something's fishy about yeah. this <laughs> have you ever had a partner as a teammate. No. I'm a lone wolf. Okay. Now, you're a salesman. Mm hmm So, you might be in, uh, and I'm making states up because I don't really know, might be in Louisiana one weekend and Iowa one weekend and uh, Nevada one weekend. Um uh, and you probably know a little bit in advance, 
but not really. So a lot of the benefit of being hooked up with other players on the community is that you know they can tell you that there is a good game in such and such a casino in such and such a city that you might never get to. And so is having this network valuable when you're going from place to place to place all over the country, or is it irrelevant? It's ex- it's extremely valuable. In what um, way? To ne- Well, um, generally speaking, I mean, you guys have been to the parties uh, for the BGA community, and, and my network and the friends that I have, um, that information as to, like, Hey, last time you were there, what were the conditions? Is it a sweatshop? Is it not a sweatshop? Should I hit and run them? Can I sit down and play? That is the most valuable information. Yep. Like all the stuff about what the rules are and what the penetration is, none of that is anywhere near as important as this place will take action right. or this place will throw you out in five minutes. Right. You know, I mean, that is the most important thing to, to know. And the other thing that is so important about knowing lots of people and having them spread out is, you know, you get somewhere and you and you run out of cash and you say, hey, I ran out of cash. Can you loan me 20000 right. or whatever? And, you know, so having a network of people around where – that's an option is another one that's, you know, extremely valuable. Yep, I agree. What about cashing chips? Is that ever? That too. <laughs> <laughs> that too, yeah. Yeah, that that, that definitely helps. <laughs> or buying chips. Yeah, both <laughs> yeah. ways. Yeah. Coming in with, with chips is, is better Now, than you mentioned not. going to the cage when you got told to hit the dusty trail, which yeah. is something that I never do. Um, is that... Your normal MO is to just cash out at the end of your session? So um, it, it depends. If I'm going to be in the area for a while, no. Um, that particular trip, I was I needed to travel down to another area of the state later that night for other appointments in the morning. Um, so I, I wasn't going to drive back because I was flying out from this other city in the state. So yeah. I really didn't have a choice in it. I needed to cash out. But I, mean, I could have kept chip inventory from there but it was very far away from home base let's just say so i i didn't really care it's not like they will have forgotten about you in the two months it's going to take you to get back there right 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 and are you hat or no hat <laughs> <laughs> or you don't care you don't? i don't i don't care i don't i've never done the whole i mean i've changed my look a little bit um to change facial hair or yeah, hair length and those facial kind of hair, hair. I'll, I'll wear a hat. Not I, I will not wear a hat twice. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but um, you yeah. will not wear the same hat twice. Right, exactly. In, in a casino that I've been well, backed off from. Well, there are distinctive things about you, so I suspect you tried not to uh, make that obvious. That's never seen ever. All right. Machine games. Do you ever play video poker or must hit by slots? Or I do. You mentioned other forms of AP. So yeah. you've branched into slots and video poker or any other forms of AP? Um, so not like big team hole carding or anything like that, but there's been some opportunities that I've caught um, just doing some mild training. Um, I really could be a lot better, but one particular spot was just – really obvious um and so you know done a little bit of that um but nothing like in a major way it's mostly counting uh, that's the bread and butter and then um machine play too so unless you're playing progressives so much of the benefit of playing video poker is the mailers that come and those kind of things where you might not be back at a place for several months or ever. Mm-hmm. So you lose out on at least that part of it unless you have a somebody who can pick it up for you. Yep. But progressives are still obvious. Progressives, you could be there for 14 hours. Or well, you don't have to stay until the end, And but it is uh, – and if he has to be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed at 9 o'clock the next morning, <laughs> it's a chance he's not going to play for 14 hours. Oh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of machine play locally where I, around where I live. 
so I can get most of the benefits. But I do have do the you network. Count cards in the same places where you no right okay okay. So I have beginning of my career backed off, but yeah, right. no but now no you're issues now. Machines, you, yeah, yeah. He looks so, at slot me. You know, are you playing machines where are you playing games where getting W two Gs is possible yes likely okay so that you definitely have to show id for that yes showing somebody else's id doesn't work real well correct <laughs> all right we are pretty much through with you sd1 <laughs> rich and i have a brief segment called recommended that we're going to get into thank you very much for coming by it was very interesting and informative thank you guys it was an honor all right, Richard, time for you to recommend something to our audience. Uh, my recommendation this week is, uh, and again, uh, people may have, I've mentioned magic stuff before. So um, the recommendation is a thing called Wonderground, and it's run by a pretty famous magician in magic circles, a guy named Jeff McBride. And it's held the third Thursday of every month. And it's at a Middle Eastern restaurant hookah lounge called Olive on Sunset between Sand Hill and Annie Oakley. And um, they have magic and weird interpretive dance and sometimes body painting. And it's just kind of a weird thing that happens every month on the third Thursday. Um so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, you know, you can Google it. It's called Wonderground, and uh, that's my recommended for the week. All right. I'm going to talk about a website that I wasn't going to talk about today, but I was mentioning it to Richard when Sky came in the room, and he says he knows something about it. So this sounds like a good idea to talk about. It's called helpareporter.com. And when you get emails for them, it comes under H-A-R-O, which stands for Help a Reporter Out. But if you look up H-A-R-O.com, I hope you speak German, because it isn't what you want here. Now, what helperreporter.com does is three times a day they send out emails to everybody on their list with 50 to 100 to 200 different ideas our reporters are looking for information about something it could be um, on finance it could be on what to get dad for Christmas it could be survivors of this kind of attack it could be anything so if you have if you're an expert on something and want to get your name out there it is interesting so i've been doing it for a couple weeks now have not come across anybody looking for a premier video poker writer and teacher in the world uh, but any kind of gambling, if they come out for, I can present myself as an expert. And whether or not they choose to use me or not, I don't know. They, If you decide that they want you, you send an email and say, I'm the guy who can answer your question. This is my credentials, and this is my email address and phone number. And they may or may not connect with you, depending on whether they like your resume and how many other people answer but for those who want to get your name out there, it is a um, it's a good source. Now, Sky, you said you know something about this site. <laughs> uh, I know the founder. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That's something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So, um, so it hasn't helped me yet, but I'm expecting it to, and I'm looking forward to getting contacts from there. Occasionally, I get emails from people who know who I am and are looking for some kind of video poker expert but uh but this might be other other people who come along thank you sky thank you richard go out and hit lots of royal flushes everybody good day